Whenever life throws us a curveball and breaks us away from normalcy, people tend to resort back to their, their primitive nature. People that are highly anxious, depressed, angry, selfish. These things tend to be amplified. That's why you had people that were buying up all the hand sanitizer, buying up all the toilet paper, either to hoard in their own home or to sell it for a profit. Don't worry, you'll see her on the street corner selling it for double in a minute. That's exactly what she's doing. I because know. these primitive characteristics are, are sort of running how they do things when they wouldn't normally do this. However, that works for the positive parts as well. So during times of crisis, we see people who step up and become much more giving, more loving, more selfless. And the big takeaway in all of this is that during those times of normalcy, during the times when you have the bandwidth to be able to work on yourself, when you're not dealing with a stressful situation, that is the time to work on yourself and to make yourself a better person. Meditate, work on ways of reducing your anxiety, giving back. It's really important that we do that so that when another crisis like this happens, and it will happen, we've worked on ourselves and we're ready and we can become a positive vehicle for change. I would say the thing that I've come to appreciate the most throughout this whole experience is the gift of time that we've all been given. As awful as this pandemic has been, the health impact, the economic impact, one thing is for certain is that this has allowed us the opportunity to slow down and do things that we've never been able to really do. I have a one-year-old and when my first two children were growing up, I was working two jobs, worked 60 to 70 hours per week. And there'd be times where I would leave before they would wake up and I would come home after they were in bed and I'd miss whole days. I remember seeing them after a day or sometimes two of not seeing them and thinking, wow, they've, they've grown up. They've changed since the last time I saw them. They look different. They sound different. They're talking different. They're doing new things. Oh my gosh, you're doing it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Specifically, this whole experience has allowed me to really see my one-year-old grow up and I can see her becoming the transition from being a baby into being a toddler. I've also been able to work on projects, things around the house that I always just say, oh, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. Well, actually, right now I do. I have all the time in the world. I'm so used to just going from one thing to another and just being stressed out, strung out. But this whole experience, I don't ever feel the sense of urgency to go somewhere on the weekend, do something, because we can't. I think it goes without saying that this whole distance learning has been incredibly disruptive. And so we can look at this in two different ways. We can look at it from the negative perspective and how much time that we've lost, how much progress we've lost, and how much we're gonna have to make up whenever things return back to normal. But we can also think of it as a positive disruption as well. So this whole experience got educators looking at 
ways that we can do things different from testing to the way that we deliver content. So despite the multitude of challenges that have been put in place, I think about some of our students that have long struggled in the classroom. In some ways, this has been a blessing. They're able to be at home, not distracted by the visual and the auditory distractions of the classroom. They can put on their headphones and be able to get the content delivered to them in a way that has been very challenging for them to get previously. To piggyback off of that, I'm excited to see what the education world does in response to all this. By no means am I saying that the technology is the answer. If anything, this whole thing has shown us the vital importance of the face-to-face, human-to-human interactions between teacher and student. Nothing can replace being live in person in the classroom. However, there are things that we can take away from this whole experience, parts that are working and that are benefiting our students and being able to incorporate them into a live in-person classroom. That's what I'm really excited about.